Hey there, from my hotel room in Geneva, we have just wrapped up day one of Watches and Wonders, and I wanted to talk about my thoughts on Tudor's releases. I had a chance to go hands-on with all the new releases towards the end of the day, uh, and I was really surprised in a few ways by what I saw. I want to start with the Black Bay 58 GMT. Of course, this is a watch that many people have been asking for since the release of the initial uh, Black Bay 58 uh, for a GMT complication to be added uh, because of the Black Bay GMT having uh, a bit of a big case, a bit of a thick case, uh, thinking that uh, you know the 58 case is really kind of the ideal form factor to be adding this kind of a complication. Of course, Tudor did not have a movement that would make that work, uh, that would work in the, in the, in the case the size of a, a Black Bay 58. Uh, so this new watch, they've developed a new movement the MT5450. And this movement is really what you should be paying attention to here. This is a Metis certified master chronometer uh, that incorporates the GMT functionality, uh, the, the flyer style uh, functionality here of the GMT complication, uh, which is what we would want to see. And it's done it uh, in a way that it could be packaged into a case about the size of a Black Bay 58, uh, naturally, and it falls into that collection, of course, and it's under 13 millimeters in thickness. It's uh, about 12.8 millimeters overall in thickness, which is really just, uh, I think, about a tenth of a millimeter bigger than the standard Black Bay 58. So I think what they've done here is opened up a lot of doors for themselves, uh, and I really hope that we start to see this movement uh, used in other ways uh, across more of their collections. Uh, now that brings me to the only thing that uh, I'm not entirely fond of about this watch, uh, which is the colorway. Uh, they have used a gilt uh, colorway here against the matte black dial uh, and a red and black bezel, aluminum bezel insert, which also has gilt uh, writing on it. It doesn't quite come together as well as I would like. Uh, some people might like it more than I do. That's totally a personal preference uh, type thing. Uh, but the bigger news here is really the movement that's been developed for it and the size of the case that it fits in. This has me really excited about what we might see uh, in the future in terms of new GMT watches from Tudor. But that's not my favorite watch that I saw today from Tudor. For that, we look at the new Black Bay 41. Uh, this is a watch that I really enjoyed, a lot more than I was really expecting to, uh, and I think that comes down to how they've treated the colorway. This is just a simple black and white execution. They have not done this before in the Black Bay range. They all have a gilt treatment when it comes to these black dials. So I'm really happy to see it on this Black Bay 41, and it works exceptionally well. This case carries over uh, some of the minor refinements that were made last year that we saw uh, in that watch with the burgundy bezel and black gilt dial as well. Uh, and here it's really just treated as a clean slate uh, modern take on what is of course a classic kind of timeless diver inspired by their divers from uh, the mid-century. Uh, and it works really well here. Uh, this has a formality to it, especially with the five link bracelet. Uh, this comes with three different bracelets, uh, that five link, uh, an oyster style bracelet, as well as a rubber strap that can be fitted to it as well. Uh, it does not ship with the rubber strap included, uh, and the same goes for the Black Bay 58 GMT, by the way. Now you might think that this new Black Bay 41 is a bit basic, a bit simple. They already have a watch like this in the Pelagos range, but this hits a little bit differently. There's a formality to this watch that, of course, is not represented anywhere in the Pelagos uh, collection, uh, but this harkens back to uh, maybe like a Rolex Submariner from the 90s or something like that, uh, or even a, a modern sub, uh, but it's got that, of course, classic design. Now this does keep the round hour markers with the snowflake hands, which you may or may not be a fan of, uh, but overall I think the big news here is just how well this clean, simple, refreshing colorway treated this way without the gilt accents. It feels like a breath of fresh air in this design language. Uh, and once again, I really hope that this is something that we start to see more often. I would love to see a Black Bay 58 uh, with the same treatment, uh, and maybe more importantly, a Black Bay 58 GMT with the same treatment. Uh, this watch uh, was really surprising how much I liked it. And again, these are changes that you might not really notice or appreciate if you're scrolling through your Instagram feed and see this, but in person, they do make a big difference uh, and it wears exceptionally well on the wrist, even given its size. Uh, wearability matters more than all the numbers that you're going to see here, and this watch has that factor going for it. So those were the two big releases from Tudor this year. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your reactions on these watches. What do you think of the Black Bay 58 GMT? Do you like the colorway? Is this not for you? What would you like to see this movement used in? And let me know your thoughts on the new Black Bay 41 down below as well. That'll do it for this one. Keep an eye out for more coming from the show later this week. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. If you enjoyed this content, a like and a share helps out a lot. Until next time, take care.